if you haven't figured it out already, I'm a pretty big Cardano fan. And as a Cardano-based content creator, I'm gonna explain to you why I like Bitcoin's blockchain model over Cardano's. Welcome to Late Game Crypto, my name is Josh and I'm here helping you make smarter investments for late game gains. And remember, anything you hear in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. Do your own research and own your own decisions. At this point, I feel like I'm just making up titles to turn some heads. Still, apparently, I'm, I'm not doing a very good job. I'm still under a thousand subscribers. But I do feel good about the content that I'm creating, and for the past couple of weeks, my content has not been bogged down by random CNFT projects. But regardless of what content you see on my channel, if you've been here before, you know that I'm going to find some way to bring it down to economic theory. And this video is no different. Bitcoin is an incredible work of innovation, and I don't think there's anybody that would disagree with that. I'm one of those people that believes that Satoshi Nakamoto was actually a small team of people that came together and developed what we know as the first blockchain technology. I just don't think that there's any way that a single person in one lifetime would have been able to accumulate enough expertise for what it took to develop Bitcoin. Just as a start, it would have taken an expert in mathematics and cryptography and software engineering and economics. Or so I'm told, I'm not an expert in any of these fields. Though I do sometimes pretend to be. Now, Cardano's proof of stake mechanism does have a ton of advantages over Bitcoin's proof of work mechanism. As it should be. I mean, it has almost a decade of technological advancement and development in the world of cryptocurrency to pull knowledge from. Cardano is far more energy efficient than Bitcoin is. It will be far faster and more scalable. And there are a plethora of advantages that come from advancing on Bitcoin's UTXO model with Cardano's extended UTXO model. But still, I like Bitcoin's long-term economic incentivization for people to run the network than I do on Cardano. Which is a very important part of running a successful network. You have to have people that consistently want to keep running the network. And I think Bitcoin does a better job of that than Cardano does. Does this mean that I don't believe in the long-term success of the Cardano ecosystem? No, of course not. I still own far more Cardano-based assets than Bitcoin, which some people may say is a mistake, but I've put my money where my mouth is and this channel is remaining a Cardano-based channel. I just think that there is value in encouraging this discussion and deeper thought on ways that we can continue to incentivize stake pool operators to keep running the network. That deeper thought and formulation of our own opinions could come in handy when it comes to voting on proposals for the long-term success of the Cardano ecosystem. And again, that's not to say that Cardano necessarily has a problem, I just think Bitcoin does it better. The core difference between the two is pretty simple. With Bitcoin, all you require is the right computing power and sufficient electricity. Cardano is way more efficient in both of these areas, but it also requires a heck of a lot more effort and knowledge in the area of digital marketing just to have a shot at turning a profit. In that way, Cardano is way more complex, and it allows users the opportunity to exercise more capabilities for on-chain activity. Because of this capability, more free market principles become protected by decentralized blockchain technology, which is amazing. But in that complexity is where Cardano loses that cohesive incentivization that Bitcoin has. What's not complex is the function of the like button down below. Be sure to hit that to help me reach more people with content like this. Let me explain more of what I mean on Bitcoin. Bitcoin has a coded law for overall supply, consensus rules, and diminishing returns for miners. All of these elements systematically work together to increase the demand of Bitcoin. The 21 million Bitcoin supply has the obvious effect of making Bitcoin a deflationary asset which is only impacted by the demand of the free market. Most crypto people already understand this. 
But it gets really interesting when you start to factor in diminishing mining rewards as a result of Bitcoin's halving cycles contrasted with the cost of electricity. And I know that cost of electricity can be very subjective for different places around the world. I, I don't think that matters to make this phenomenon work. The fact that it costs anything at all for electricity has a sustaining impact on the price of Bitcoin because it establishes a reference point for its value. If it costs $100,000 to mine one Bitcoin, you're not likely to go and sell that Bitcoin for less than $100,000. Nobody's actively looking to take a loss on that. By choosing not to sell your Bitcoin, you are contributing to the scarcity and thereby demand of Bitcoin. And if at any point it is cheaper to buy Bitcoin than it is to spend the electricity to mine Bitcoin, it might sound like a good idea to you to buy Bitcoin because it seems like you're getting a good deal. Then when the Bitcoin halving takes place, it doubles the calculation of what it costs to mine just one Bitcoin. I think you get the point. There is a systematic mechanism in place that drives the perception of what Bitcoin is worth. Plus, the reliably inflating costs of electricity is definitely helping that along the way. Cardano has its own set of incentives to keep the network running, but I don't think that they're particularly unique to the cryptocurrency space, and they're definitely not as cohesively systematic as Bitcoin is. There is a motivation to stake your ADA and get interest back paid back in ADA, which is awesome if you assume that the price of ADA is going up because that effectively multiplies your returns. The only people that have to worry about electricity costs are stake pool operators, which is fine for the big ones in the fully saturated pools. But the small ones might not necessarily be super reliable if they don't have the technical or marketing skills in order to survive. I'm definitely in the camp that single pool operators define Cardano's resiliency and are the best defense against decentralization in the Cardano ecosystem. Now, it could also be argued that layer ones like Cardano don't necessarily need the same systematic incentivization like Bitcoin does. With scalability solutions like Hydra, the capability of what one stake pool can do makes a much bigger impact on what the Cardano blockchain is capable of. And the increasing value of the coin comes from the development of dApps in the ecosystem that increase the functionality of the native currency. In reality, Bitcoin and Cardano are kind of playing two different ball games. They have different functionalities and different value propositions, so of course they're going to have different macroeconomic incentives. But all I'm saying is the reliability of the perceived value of Bitcoin and where it's going is much more tangible because of the cost and time that it takes to generate it. Whereas the value of ADA relies on people seeing enough value in the currency to buy it, which I absolutely believe will happen. That's why I'm way more invested in Cardano than I am in Bitcoin. But I do acknowledge that it is a bigger risk. I just happen to decide that it's a risk that I'm willing to take and one that I can afford. This might very well be one of the more random videos that I've put up on this channel, but I still want to know what you think. What are your thoughts on the economic incentive structures between these two cryptos or any other cryptos? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this content and you want to keep up on my Cardano based content moving forward, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss my videos every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose, learn as much as you can about this space, and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.